Say hello and welcome. Excellent. So glad to see you guys here today. Um, we are going to wait to really officially start right at two o'clock, but so glad that you're here. Um, excited to share these wonderful resources with you today. Um, and again, as you see in the chat and you can see on the screen, um, we'll be talking about the North Carolina Portrait of a Graduate Durable Skills. And so just to activate our thinking and get us warmed up for the conversation today, we'd love for you to, to think about which of the durable skills have you been called on to practice this week? And what might be an example of how you use that durable skill? Um, so I invite you to just share in the chat and we'd love to get the conversation started. Welcome. Thank you for getting us started, Superintendent Truitt. <laughs> Empathy is a great one. <laughs> I love that. I think maybe for me too. I've been traveling a lot this week. And so having empathy and being thoughtful as people are frustrated or stressed and things aren't going the way you expected, it's really, really important, I think. So that's a great one. Christy, what about you? Well, for me so far this week, adaptability has been pretty key. Um, so we moved our both of our um, older adult children into their respective college dorm accommodation or college uh, um, residence. And uh, yeah, so we've had a quite, quite a lot of activity in our house and being adaptable and going with the flow a little bit, you know, listening to others um, has been a really key part of my tool kit this week. Thank you. Nice, and again, so as you're, everyone listening out there, I know it looks like you've got over a hundred people joined so far, so exciting. Um, close to 200, so glad you're here. This is great. Um, again, feel free to add your, your thoughts to the chat. Um, as we kind of give people a minute to log on. Okay, thank you, Shannon. Um, hey, everybody, Christy Van Auken here, and uh, I am the special advisor to Superintendent Catherine Truitt for workforce engagement. And um, I'm delighted to, to open up the session on the webinar um, to help us all get to know the rubrics and the additional supporting documents that we've created to help um, with the, the, the road mapping, the usage of the portrait of a graduate durable skills. Um, here you see the rubric planning team here at DPI. So you've got myself and uh, Dr. Andrew Smith and Dr. Angie Mullenix. They are my partners in crime in helping keep me straight. Uh, they're, they're experts in this work and I couldn't be doing it without their help. And I'm delighted to uh, kind of be their co-collaborator as we've gone through these both phase one and now finishing completing phase two and starting on phase three of the portrait of a graduate process. Next slide, please. So um, before we get started, we're gonna do a very quick poll. We're gonna leave this open for exactly one minute. So um, you'll see where the question is, where is your district in its portrait of a graduate journey? So you see the poll here. Um, 
So just let us know and find something. It may not be exactly the answer that you would come up with, but just choose an answer that you feel most closely matches where you are right now. Okay, we'll give another 30 seconds. Hopefully we've had a chance to kind of look these over. Okay, um, Aaron, would you mind showing us the poll results, please? Okay, well, this is awesome. Um, and, and honestly, not unexpected. So as you can see in the poll results, more than half of you are just getting started and learning more about the, the rubrics and learning more about the portrait of a graduate itself. And um, the, it's great that you're here because we're gonna go through some of the backstory and then also how we can use the newer resources that were just recently launched. Um, appreciate those of you who've shared the North Carolina Portrait of a Graduate with your school boards and with your communities um, inside your buildings as you kind of dabbled or experimented maybe with the durable skills and how they might be working anywhere from your central offices all the way down to the classroom and, um, and individual um, student experiences. So next slide, please. Okay, so we've got to give credit where credit's due. And here you will see the entire rubric leadership team. And um, so it's not actually just the three of us that, that come up with these, these amazing rubrics with the help of our technical team at Patel for Kids. All of the folks that you see listed here um, have contributed and given us valuable feedback on how to do this right. Um, we wanted to nail it. We want to make sure that the resources that we um, that we uh, dispatch into the field is something that really works for you. And so we bring a lot of voices to the table to make sure we get it right. Next slide. And so now I have the distinct privilege of introducing State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Catherine Truitt. She is an amazing leader. Um, she has been in this office for more than two and a half years now, and already we have seen the incredible transformation, not only in reading and student achievement, but also in this idea around workforce and um, durable skills and deeper learning as a way for us to innovate and ensure that students are getting the best possible um, educational experience. So I'm going to turn the mic over to State Superintendent Catherine Truitt. Thank you for being here today. Well, thank you, Christy. I'm so excited to be here with everyone. It's an exciting time as we are getting ready to go back in the classroom. Some of us may, may have already gotten things going. Some of us are parents who are sending their, their kids back. Um, my third and final child is starting high school on Monday. So it's a very exciting time at, at our house. Um, you know, I, I loved our, our opening prompt about which competency or which durable skill have you most needed to call on this past week? And I put empathy in the chat because, you know, I, I get a lot of emails from parents um, through, throughout the, the year, but especially as we are going back to school, um, parents with questions and parents with challenges that need solving and frequently, I'm not the person who can who can solve their challenges for them, and and so I, it's it's um, I'm always tempted to think to myself, well, you know, you you need to ask your your principal, or you know, why are why are they why do they think that that I can help them? And I have to remember that if someone is reaching out to me, it might be because they don't um, necessarily know where else to go, and so even though it's frustrating for me. That, that I, I can't necessarily help them the way that they need to be helped. Um, I can certainly empathize with them, uh, give them a, a space to vent. And I can remember that um, what they're doing makes sense to them. And so I, I, I definitely um, appreciate that we value 
as a state this durable skill of empathy enough to include it as one of our seven durable skills. You know, I, I've been around the state all throughout the summer and I've had the chance to speak with a couple, couple of local chambers. I've been with the North Carolina State Chamber. Um, this past week, I was in Charlotte talking to the Charlotte Regional Business Alliance. And when I share the portrait of a graduate with them, the ideas behind it and the actual seven competencies, it's like um, a, a, a sea of nods all around the room as I read out the seven competencies one by one. You you just see folks going, uh-huh, oh, yeah, uh-huh, looking at their neighbor and saying, oh my, isn't that incredible? And oh yes, th this is it, this is exactly what we need. I think what 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 resonates about this is not just with employers, but also with people who are parents. They they know, yes, this is what we want our future employee employees to have. This is what we want our our children to have as they grow into to young adults. And and so I, I just love that we're able to find such common ground with the portrait of a graduate. And, and I love that we've been able to use federal dollars to, to partner with Patel for Kids to make this as easy for teachers as possible. We don't need to, to give teachers more work to do. We need to make this shovel ready for our teachers so that they can start really implementing these durable skills in, in an intentional way and in, in a way that creates more relevancy for their students. So I'm, I'm really excited about this. You, you all on this call have heard the expression, we're preparing kids for jobs that we don't even know exist yet. You've heard people say that a million times, I'm sure. And it's true, but we do know what skills they will need. And it is the skills of these seven competencies. So I could not be more proud to be part of this information session, to be part of the overall effort to make sure that we are clear with students and parents that the purpose of school is to eventually prepare students for this post-secondary plans of their choice. We want kids to be successful in whatever they cho choose to do after high school. So thank you all for being part of this journey and thank you all for your passion for our durable skills and skills and competencies. I'll turn it back to you, Christy. Thank you, Superintendent Truett. So um, let's get into the portrait story. Um, so we launched the portrait back in October of 2022. So it's really not that long ago. Uh, State Superintendent Truett and um, a, a, literally a, a panel of students um, went to really talked through each one of the, the durable skills that were decided on. We've got seven. Um, and, and, and they talked about how relevant it made learning for them. And it was a wonderful way for us to really kick off the process, the culmination of nine months of intentional work and, and largely of listening. So the, wh wh one of the most important things about the early work of the portrait of a graduate is just this understanding that this is not a DPI thing that we created for, um, you know, by ourselves in the big pink palace here in Raleigh. This is something that was created across the state of North Carolina by North Carolinians. And we invited stakeholders, more than 1,200 of them, and they created these design teams in regions across the entire state. And we, um, with the help of Battelle for Kids, had amazing conversations about what we really cared about. And, and we narrowed from about 50 potential competencies or durable skills down to these seven as the most important. And it was the design teams that guided that process. Um, then it went up to a leadership team and we sent all the feedback back down to the design team. And in collaboration with the voices across the state, the, the portrait of a graduate um, really came to life. And it was really, really an, a valuable, deep, and um, it, amazing experience for us that were part of it from our side. Next slide, please. So here you will see the um, seven durable skills as they've been identified. And um, 
the, the whole idea behind the why. So the why really is for this idea around deeper learning and student success, knowing that um, the pace of change, like we've all heard about AI, we've all, um, and, and whether you like it or not, it's coming, right? So we discussed landscape shifts and the pace of change and what's evolving in the workforce. Um, so we, we really rooted this why in student success and workforce readiness. Um, and so we listened to employers. We crosswalked this with employers, with the state chambers and some of the groups that the superintendent just mentioned to make sure that the durable skills that we identified are going to truly make our students workforce ready, regardless of what they decide to do. So every child is on a career journey. We know that. And it doesn't really matter where it goes. It could go directly to the workforce. It could be military service and then to the workforce, or it could be college into the workforce, but eventually most people are going to have a job and we want them to feel prepared for that, ready, and to have these durable skills that employers are telling us that they don't have. So if we think, I'm going to just very quickly refer back to two studies. One is the America Succeed study, which looked at 4 million job postings throughout North Carolina alone, and more than 70% of those include a durable skill. None of those include an ACT score. Um, and then we also looked at the employer needs survey and what employers identified to the state of North Carolina is that they were having trouble finding talent with these employability skills. So employability skills, durable skills, all the same language, soft skills, same language. Um, we call them durable skills because there's nothing soft about this. These are the skills that are going to last students a lifetime. Next slide, please. So let's transition now our thinking about the rubrics themselves. So I've given you a very quick snapshot of the backstory. Um, we'd be glad, by the way, anybody on the leadership team or our planning team would be glad to go into your district to speak more intentionally or maybe have a longer conversation about this. We'd love to do that. So just let us know. You can put it in the chat or just reach out to us directly. We'd be glad to come and, and talk to you more about it. Um, so for today, though, what I want to do is go right into the rubrics and what, what the rubrics are designed to do. Now, many of you are likely using rubrics like this in your school buildings and in your classrooms. Um, so you kind of get an idea. But to think about mapping rubrics for seven competencies by grade span, so starting from K through, through second grade, three through five, middle and high school, to make sure that we can create a scaffold for you, for teachers, for students to identify the development and the cultivation of these durable skills as they go along their educational journey. So these rubrics are designed to help students and teachers with planning for um, providing feedback, for students to see themselves as they're developing these skills and to be able to identify with self-reflection. Oh yeah. I see myself being more empathetic. I understand now that what I just demonstrated was adaptability. So these kinds of tools to help us really shape that learning and to give you the tools that you need to start really experimenting, but in a very pragmatic and um, sophisticated way with the rubrics and deploying them in your classrooms. So the rubrics do describe important skills and dispositions, um, and it gives us a common vocabulary. So we needed to, we, we actually very, very carefully scanned each of the rubrics themselves for that continuity of language um, so that every student, every teacher can see themselves in it, they understand it, there's clarity, and that we can then use that clarity to make sure that we're kind of moving in lockstep together. Um, so, and then finally, this idea around self-assessment and self-reflection, we feel like that that is the, the, the missing link, right? So we've got the idea of the tools, and then we've got the ideas of the student learning and the identification of it and the success. Next slide. All right. So today, our goal, well, actually, yes, and every day, our goal is to provide educators with the tools they need. And, and to deploy these durable skills in the portrait of a graduate for all students across the state of North Carolina. And um, now I should, I, I will mention again that these are not required. So we cannot mandate that you use this. Um, but what we know is that this is exactly what employers are asking for. This is exactly what um, stakeholders across North Carolina said that they cared about most. So there's a lot of value 
to um, thinking about how your district can use these skills to, to develop you know, really amazing citizens um, and truly prepare students for the post-secondary plan of their choice. Next slide, please. All right, so the scope of our work. So phase two was all about the rubrics, the I can statements and uh, the suggestions for use document, which you will hear about in uh, just a few more minutes. And next, we are going to be kicking off a, a performance task phase. And we're thinking about this in really new and unique ways. So not necessarily just something that is visual and static, but something that is dynamic and maybe would have badging and some other opportunities for us to really dig in and to identify the students as they continue to build these skills. So that kicks off um, probably in September, but expect maybe some workshopping or some conversations at the AIM conference in October um, as we prepare for that as well. Next slide. All right, so now we're going to get to some to the fun part. I'm going to introduce uh, Dr. Shannon King. She has been the project leader for Battelle for Kids. She's a leader also at Battelle for Kids. But in our case, she has been the leader and our main point of contact as we have really, I mean, we dug into these rubrics and um, was it was really with the the help of, of uh, Dr. King and her team as we continue to, to, to really bring these rubrics to life and to figure out the right tools to help you in the classroom. So uh, Shannon, if you'd like to take it away, I uh, appreciate you going from here. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Christy. And again, welcome everyone. We are so delighted that you're here. Um, I'm going to start by taking a moment to introduce the Patel for Kids team that has been a real big part of this project. Um, so in addition to myself, um, Sarah Hallerman, who's a senior director for Patel for Kids, was really instrumental um, in leading the rubric development, and she'll be continuing to help lead the work in the phase three, as Christy was just talking about. Uh, we also have Beth Silviera, uh, a senior director. You might recognize her from the portrait development process. She led that work, and she's been key in helping us think about how this work unfolds across the state since she lives there in North Carolina. Carolina. She's um, helped us really stay close to the heart of the work uh, and to you all. And then Joanne Mart is joining us here. Um, she's a director and a project manager, so she's going to um, take us into phase three. Again, this is such exciting work, such unique work. From, um, our, our organization really works with um, districts across the country. I mean, to see a whole state kind of come together like this is very, very impressive. And we're grateful to be partnered with you all in this work. And so um, today we're really, and Sarah, if you don't mind transitioning to the next slide, today we're really looking at um, a big picture overview of the rubrics uh, and kind of introduce you to everything. We are going to offer a, a chance for you to take a deeper dive in virtual office hours. So as you can see on the screen, there is a virtual office hour for each of those durable skills. Um, and that'll be a chance for you to really dig in and ask questions. Um, we'll facilitate these virtual office hours with um, a facilitated learning experience um, brief at the start and then give you a chance to really ask questions and get some answers to those questions. Um, and so today during this overview, um, feel free to use the chat to, to share and, and, and chat with us. And then if you wanna know more about any of the particular durable skills, do sign up for those office hours. We'd love to see you there. Um, those are all happening next week. They'll also be recorded um, in case the times don't work for your schedule. And I think I just saw links pop in the chat. So that's great. Please sign up today. Um, and speaking of today, Sarah, if you'll take us to the next uh, slide, our outcomes really, again, big picture. We want to identify and um, locate helpful resources, help you identify and locate those helpful resources that uh, your fellow educators have helped create uh, in the rubric toolkit. And so those include rubrics, which as Christy mentioned, are um, leveled by grade band. There are ICANN statements, which are also available by grade band. And then a suggestions for use document with kind of tips and hints and ways to help you really think about using these, these um, documents uh, in your classrooms and in your uh, districts. So next slide, that's today. I wanna just step back for a minute and really briefly kind of orient you to the design process um, and, and talk to you a little bit about the teams um, that created these rubrics and these processes. I introduced you to my team, but if you'll click on the next slide, Sarah, um, more, most importantly, a hundred, more than a hundred educators from across the state of North Carolina, your colleagues came together to help us build these rubrics. Um, these design themes, um, really were, were really key in making this happen. Um, there were, again, building administrators, central office staff, coaches, teachers, counselors, uh, all different 
um, subject areas, all different grade levels really were a part of this process. We could not have done it without them. We are so grateful for the work of these educators. They participated in multiple meetings. They were so generous with their time. We worked really hard and dug in to think about what do we want to really um, spotlight and emphasize about each of these durable skills and these rubrics. Um, and so again, thank you to, to all that helped us on the rubric development teams. In addition to the educators that were really key on the development teams, we also had, as Christy mentioned, that rubric leadership team. Um, again, leaders across your state who really helped us with visioning the, the work and kind of gave us crucial feedback along the way about what we wanted these rubrics to, to look like and feel like. Um, and they really, really weighed in on the suggestions for use document, helping us think about what would be most useful for you. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later in the webinar. And so let's talk a little bit about the rubrics. Um, we'll just talk a little bit about the way that we created the rubrics um, and kind of get you um, used to the terminology and the structure that you'll see in these rubric documents when you have a chance to dig in in just a moment. Um, so when you think about the rubrics and you look at the rubrics themselves, what you'll notice, um, again, is that along that um, left-hand side of each rubric, you'll see the criteria for each durable skill. Now, it's important to note that again, these durable skills are nuanced and complex. Um, and so this list of criteria is not exhaustive. The educators that worked with us on these design teams really helped us think through what was perhaps important to spotlight, what would we see in the class in classrooms, what would be observable about these durable skills as we take a look at them. And so we, we really did hone in on a few criteria um, to help bring the, the durable skills to life in the classrooms. And then if you look across the top, you'll see that there are three performance levels for each rubric. There is approaching expectations, meeting expectations, and exceeding expectations. And so you'll see, again, in the performance descriptors in the cells of the rubric, you'll see concrete descriptions for levels of performance for each of those criteria, and in some cases, examples, um, if that was important to help uh, clarify. And as we've mentioned as well, these grade bands, there are grade bands for each of the rubrics because we know these skills de develop differently over time for students. And so empathy looks very different at the kindergarten level as it might in high school. And so you'll see that each, again, each of the um, rubrics and the ICANN statements are broken down by grade band uh, with specific language really that's aimed um, at the developmental level of students in that, in those grade bands. And so in addition to the rubric documents, I'm going to give you an overview of the rubric toolkit and show you where to locate those documents. And so if you notice on the North Carolina Portrait of a Graduate website, in addition to all the amazing resources that your DPI team has been putting up there since you created your portrait, we now have a section for your toolkit. Um, and that toolkit will take you to the rubrics, the ICANN statements, and the suggestions for use. Um, now this is one time we don't mind you multitasking. I just see Aaron drop the link to the um, to the website there. So please feel free to just grab that link and scoot on over to this web page because we would love for you to click around. We think that's going to be better than anything I could say to you right now. Um, and so just invite you to, to click on that link. And when you click on that link, you will see the tabs. And they, there's now a tab um, on that far right hand side um, that says supporting documents. And there, when you click on that, you'll see this screen. If so, Sarah, if you'll click to the next slide. Thank you. You'll see that screen. And um, that shows you how you can filter. There are lots and lots of documents included in the toolkit, and we want you to help you find the documents that you're looking for quickly and easily. So we provided um, different ways for you to filter these things. Um, so if you click to the next slide, you will see that you can then um, search by durable skill. You can search by the resource you're looking for, and you can search by the grade level. And again, you'll have the individual documents. They are in formats um, that you can use. So like for instance, um, the different resources are available um, in Google format, for example. If, for, if it's a resource we want you to use with students that you're gonna be, you might need to customize a little bit um, to make it useful, or again, and to help you really um, make the most use of this. So take a look and I'll just give you a couple minutes to really click around um, and, and you know, post again, you can post some questions or comments right now, but we're really excited to see these resources pulled, um, pub pulled together and published for you all across the state.
if there's anyone who just has a quick question or wondering, we are we are here to support you. Okay, well, with that, I will hand the mic over to Sarah to really give you an overview of the rubrics. Thank you so much, Shannon. I'm so excited uh, to be with you all today. Uh, my role is to really just give you a very high level overview of, of each of these rubrics. And um, before I dive in, I do want to just circle back to this idea of the office hours. I'm going to be uh, revealing the criteria for each of the um, each of the rubrics. And um, if you're interested in a deeper dive, the place to go is these office hours. Um, on the office hour sessions, we are going to be, uh, like I said, digging in and um, really kind of explaining each of the criteria a little more deeply. So today, I just wanted to give you that that background that what I'm doing today is just uh, really a high level overview. And what I'd like to do, we really thought a lot about uh, the best way to go about um, introducing the rubrics and the criteria to you. And we thought uh, to help it make sense that it would be helpful to start with a spotlight task, a sample task that fosters uh, these durable skills. The title is Learning Space Design, and this is designed for third grade. When I'm finished, we're going to uh, talk a little bit more about a suggestions for use doc. And just as an FYI, this task actually appears in the suggestions for use doc. So later we'll tell you how to find it if you're if you're interested in learning more. So I'll walk you through this. And then once I do that, I will pause and go through each of the durable skills and outline the criteria. And I'll talk a little bit about how this task might foster uh, each of those durable skills. So what I'd like to do is start by just reading the entry document for this task. Dear interior designer, we need your help to solve a problem. Besides learning math, science, and other subjects, our students need other skills. We want them to be able to practice the North Carolina portrait of a graduate durable skills to be successful in the future. The North Carolina portrait of a graduate durable skills are adaptability, collaboration, communication, critical thinking, empathy, learner's mindset, and personal responsibility. We need to create a learning space that will help students learn and practice durable skills. And your job is to design a proposal for a learning space in which 26 third grade students can be active and learn durable skills. We have money to pay for this project, but we need your creative ideas. We look forward to seeing the proposals for your design. Sincerely, John Dewey Elementary School principal and third grade teachers. So that's the prompt. And for every uh, performance task, we always include success criteria. So I'll share the criteria for this task in particular. So uh, students were challenged to uh, clearly describe their proposal that they came up with for the learning space. Uh, they had to describe at least two features that make that learning space effective. And then more specifically for each, each feature, they had to identify which of the durable skills the feature supports and why the feature will help students learn and practice that durable skill. And they were challenged to include some ideas that were surprising or unique. Most importantly, they were invited to convince the John Dewey Elementary School principal and teachers to adopt their design. They had to be convincing. Also, they had to include a label drawing that shows the features. So that's the success criteria. I'm going to really quickly just walk you through um, some highlights of how this learning experience flowed. In part one, uh, students um, learned the challenge. They read the entry event uh, and the success criteria, and uh, they had to show their understanding of the challenge. What are they deciding, designing and for whom? In part two, uh, they had to show that they really understood the durable skills and what the, those were about and skills that made up each of those durable skills. They had to uh, begin to generate ideas for their learning space. In part three, 
that was when um, they had the opportunity to start to expand their list of learning space design ideas in response to a number of learning experiences that were really engaging that included an analysis of pictures of innovative learning spaces and also uh, reading informational texts about design. And then in part four, students uh, were asked to prioritize their list of learning space design ideas. And they had to explain their ideas to a partner uh, using a listening dyad protocol where they really had to listen, um, listen carefully and uh, have the opportunity to give and receive critique. Then they had to revise their ideas based on the feedback that they received. In part five, that's when they pulled everything together and students really dug in and actually created uh, those learning space design proposals and drawings, um, really grounded in all the, all the steps that uh, prece preceded this. Uh, students used a number of graphic organizers in this task uh, to organize their thinking. Um, this is an example, a screenshot of just one of the organizers uh, that was used, but it was a key organizer. As they generated ideas uh, throughout the process, they captured them here. And each time they captured an idea, they had to indicate which uh, durable skill um, it uh, supported and why, and to be specific and clear. And this was the graphic organizer that they ultimately used to prioritize and identify uh, or land on the ideas that were woven into their proposal. So um, as I mentioned, now I'm going to transition over to just uh, walking you through each of, uh, each of the rubrics. And uh, Shannon talked about criteria. She defined um, rubric criteria um, and talked a little bit about um, the role of these um, the amazing educators that um, created these rubrics. So the process of landing on criteria, it, um, it was challenging, it was fun, it was a rigorous experience, and it relied upon a lot of different people who are sharing ideas, coming together and reaching consensus. So part of what I'm going to do now is just unveil the criteria that they landed on for each of these rubrics. You can certainly um, review the rubrics yourself and read them in, your, in uh, their entirety, but right now I'm just going to share the criteria. And when I do that, I will uh, periodically highlight how some of these uh, skills were fostered in the learning space design challenge task. So let's start with adaptability. So the adaptability design team, they landed on three criteria, agility, responding to feedback, and inclusiveness. And when I think of the task that I just highlighted in um, adaptability, those students certainly had to work on responding to feedback. Although they're third grade students, um, they engaged in, in um, a protocol and they received feedback. They had to document the feedback notes and they had to really think through how they were going to use that feedback um, to make um, revisions to their work. And so they had to be very adaptable and then sometimes ch make changes to their work. Collaboration. So this team uh, was a wonderful group. Um, they spent a lot of time deliberating on the criteria, this design team, and they came up with four agreements, roles, cooperation, and productivity and accountability. And when I think of the um, learning space design challenge, I think of um, the fact that these, it was a co complex, um, as you saw, there were multiple parts. Students were taken through um, a, a design process to create their proposals. And in doing so, they had to be productive. They had to uh, really focus on um, uh, meeting deadlines along the way, keeping their work organized and staying on track. The next rubric that I will highlight is communication. The, the rubric design team that uh, created this rubric came up with three criteria, engaging in conversations, giving and receiving feedback, and presentation of knowledge and ideas. And in the task that I shared, the learning space design uh, challenge, those students delivered a culminating presentation where they shared their work to an authentic audience. Um, and that really centered on presentation of knowledge and ideas. 
The next uh, rubric uh, that I will share is critical thinking. And uh, this critical thinking team thought critically, uh, they spent uh, a lot of time really deliberating over, um, there's so many, so many aspects, so many skills associated with critical thinking. So they spent a lot of time really thinking about um, how, to how to select uh, the criteria and the titles to use. And this is what they came up with. Um, there are four, information, discovery, and research, reasoning, analysis, and interpretation, solution finding on problem solving, and justification. And so the learning space design challenge is really a critical thinking task. It absolutely fosters critical thinking. Uh, students solve a problem. They meet a design challenge in that task. And they have to um, identify solutions, but they also had to justify their solutions. They had to explain why their ideas uh, would be helpful. Uh, empathy. Uh, this rubric has uh, four criteria, perception of self and others, relationships, diverse uh, perspectives, and also effective listening. So I see empathy and the learning space design challenge um, uh, in that listening dyad protocol that I described when, when students had to pair up with each other, those third grade students had to sit down and take turns um, sharing their ideas, uh, but they each had to take a turn being a listener and listening carefully and understanding um, so that they could in turn give helpful feedback. So I see empathy uh, playing out in that task in that many ways, but in, uh, in that way in particular. Let's move on to learner's mindset. This is a really um, exciting rubric. Uh, this team landed on four criteria, curiosity, persistence, innovation, beliefs about learning. When I talked about the learning space design challenge, one of the criteria that you may have noticed is that students were, um, challenge to come up with design ideas that were unique. Um, and so the, um, they definitely had an opportunity to uh, work on their learner's mindset in that task. All right, so next is personal responsibility. Um, this particular rubric has uh, five criteria, task initiation, planning and prioritizing, persistence, interpersonal responsibility, and intrapersonal responsibility. And this, um, when I think about the learning space design challenge, one thing the students had to do at the beginning when they um, became familiar with the success criteria is they were invited to set goals for their own performance and growth. And um, they had the opportunity to reflect on those goals throughout the process and also at the end. So that's how I see uh, personal responsibility uh, being carried out in that task. I see students um, fostering that the task, the skills associated with task initiation. So at this point, I am going to uh, pass the mic over to Andrew, and he is going to talk with us about one of the resources that we spent a lot of time on, the suggestions for use document. Thank you, Sarah and BFK team. Thank you so much for helping guide this work over the past year or so. I'm excited to talk a little bit about how you can take everything you just heard about and incorporate it into your work. And so uh, the suggestions for use document really has two audiences. So it has an audience uh, for teachers and resources that will allow you to incorporate this directly into your classroom if you are a teacher or at the school level. Um, but I'm also going to talk a little bit about the other audience, and that is uh, really school leaders and district leaders and how you can help support teachers in the integration of these skills. So I thought it was interesting, uh, the poll that we uh, just conducted at the beginning of the meeting talked about the phases that you're in this work. And I think it was something like 20 to 30% of you are in the familiarization uh, process. And I think it's important to say and, and mention is that everyone's in a different space in this journey. And so the, the place to start is in familiarizing yourself with these uh, skills and also the rubrics. So uh, you've seen the actual portrait of a graduate and skills for some time now, but now we really have a much deeper um, set of descriptions for those. So really the start of all of this is looking at those rubrics and deeply understanding and familiarizing yourself with what it really means to collaborate or to have a learner's mindset. 
Um, with that being said, for, for educators, really the first step for students is helping them understand uh, these rubrics and the durable skills. And you can, you can really start doing that by using the I can statements. Those are going to be kid friendly statements that help really digest the rubrics uh, into statements that students understand. And so I can imagine that if you're writing your learning objectives and your content standards up on the board, you might just right below those have an I can statement that matches the lesson and the durable skill that is incorporated within the lesson itself. To further support you, there are um, the deeper learning lesson examples. And so uh, Sarah kind of mentioned it and showed you uh, the third grade example. I'm going to point to that as being a link inside of uh, this suggested use document. So be sure to check that out as a way to kind of scaffold your own lesson planning development as well. We also have inside of this suggested use document uh, other resources, and one of those includes a way to help younger students really understand uh, the durable skills and reflect upon them. And so inside of the document, you'll see um, a link to something called a T-chart. Many of you probably already use these as a best practice in education, uh, but specifically, we have them developed for all of the, the grade levels and the durable skills, and it allows you to, to look at things like when I collaborate, it would, and then you have the T-chart uh, spaces. So it would look like, it would sound like, and this can be an activity for students to work together in a classroom to come up, what would it look like as a group for us to collaborate? As they write those, we suggest that you then ask students say to, to ask themselves, what's a space I'd like to really um, to work on in this lesson where I can continue to master uh, the durable skill? At the end of the lesson, you use the bottom half of that T-chart uh, to then reflect on how do we do with whatever durable skill uh, we were examining. Additionally, what I love about the rubrics is that it allows them to be developmentally appropriate. And I think this is really important for our exceptional learners. And it allows educators to tailor instruction, to pull rubrics and I, state, I, I can statements to ensure that whatever the instruction is, it's appropriate for the student and, and their specific level. So be sure to, to know that just because it says K2 or 3.5, you as an educator um, have, you know, you're really the practitioner in that space to make a decision and say, actually, for this student, I'm going to drop down and use a, a, a different rubric uh, to support them. On the next slide, I'm going to talk just a little bit uh, about what it's like uh, to incorporate these as a district leader. So these are some support ideas. Um, first off is a level of awareness. And again, this goes back to what most of you are working on right now. It's making sure your staff members understand what they actually mean. I think it's also important to say that um, for us to do this for students and to incorporate these into lessons also means that we as adults need to be abiding by these durable skills as well. Um, and so if you're thinking about your core values and the work that you do um, in your district or school, these might help inform or align with those core values as well. But we as adults, we have to model it for our students first. So there's some level of awareness around the fact that there is a portrait of a graduate and these are the durable skills that you can, you can provide as a district or school leader. Secondly, I think it's important to um, think through a team of individuals to help incorporate this work, because the adage is when everyone's in charge, no one's in charge. And so by when, when forming a, a committee or a group that's specifically focused on how you might implement this, they're going to drive and be accountable to ensuring that those tasks and this information gets out to educators and schools. Um, I'd also highly suggest looking at professional development around the why. So Simon Sinek talks about it a lot, but the why is so important. And when the work gets hard, we always go back to that why. In a minute, I'm going to spotlight some districts who've done a really good job at providing the why first and being intentional. I'd also suggest thinking about alignment. Think about the systems and structures that exist in your school or your, uh, your district, and are those aligned to these uh, durable skills? And if not, how might you go about revising those to ensure they are aligned so that educators see this as not separate and apart from the work that they do around teaching kids, but as an integrated, important element uh, and instruction in your school or district. And then lastly, uh, we've had seen several districts uh, go to their school boards and say, we'd like to adopt these. We want to be all in on these from top to bottom. Everyone agrees these are the durable skills kids know, and we're going to ensure that kids are prepared um, to live outside of K-12 and be successful through those, those durable skills. Um, just like to spotlight two districts who are doing a great job with this. They're in the initial stages of implementing Portrait of a Graduate. 
It's important to note that everyone's in a different space in this journey. And both of these leaders would say that, and they'd say that they're in a different space based upon the environment and the ecosystem uh, where they work. And so it's important that I'm going to highlight these, and they're also in the suggested document, um, but everyone's in a different space. So the first that we highlight inside of the document, I'd love for you to go there and read. This is a short synopsis, is Winston-Salem uh, Forsyth County School, which is led by uh, Tricia McManus. And they started with the why, as Simon Sinek argues you should, and really the why of deeper learning and the incorporation of portrait of a graduate as a means to ensure all children are successful after K-12. And that why has been an intentional process. They brought together stakeholders from across uh, their district, including parents, students, educators, uh, you name it, to really talk about how might they go deeper in the why and be intentional about developing strategies for ensuring everyone in a very large school system like Winston-Salem Forsyth County Schools understands and knows the next steps. They believe that if they understand the why first, uh, then they can begin to incorporate those um, at a deep level. The next district is Mooresville Graded School District. The superintendent there is Dr. Jason Gardner, and his approach is a move slow to go fast model. And he uh, had a convenient timing in that he was a brand new superintendent there over the last year, uh, but was also developing a new strategic plan. So he used that opportunity to incorporate the, uh, the portrait of a graduate durable skills into that strategic plan. And so that ensures that strategy is aligned as well as systems and structures over the next three to four years inside of the district. Um, so I would say that his process has been intentional and really measured. In that, the strategic plan has a goal about ensuring kids have the access to those skills. So it's measured in that way, and they'll be accountable to that as they continue to, to look at their strategic plan every year uh, for the next few years. Um, and then I've got just a few more elements here. Uh, as we think about um, supporting educators in this work, uh, developing uh, consistent professional development that can be pushed out at scale across your district is would be really helpful, I think. So, um, you know, training up a train the trainer model, perhaps, where folks can go out into schools and then deliver that PD in a consistent manner is one strategy. You do this in lots of other ways already. So using some old um, best practices and PD, uh, just applying the durable skills in that space. Uh, we've also provided a few resources for you as well to get you started. So inside of the suggested use document, you'll find a, a jigsaw activity with a video analysis that can help teachers really think about the durable skill and then communicate with each other around what it means to instruct students with them. We'd also suggest that if you have opportunity or the a vehicle or some kind of tool to collect best practices, that's a great way to show other educators um, the what exemplars look like. And so collecting lesson plans or work products of students is a great way of uh, pushing this initiative forward as well. And then lastly, as you think about the district role in showcasing this, there are a few options that the suggested use document speaks to, and those include developing district-wide performance tasks that may be specific to a grade level or one of the uh, durable skills, as well as capstone projects, and then opportunities for exhibitions, portfolios of student work that are tagged to those individual uh, durable skills. So th those are just some suggestions. The document has many more. I would really suggest you take a peek at it. And then lastly, I'll just mention that uh, in phase three of this work, which is getting ready to kick off, we're going to develop even more resource, resources for you so that uh, we can take some of that lift off, but we can't wait to see what you develop as well. So please always do as you develop uh, products, um, share those back with us. We'd love to highlight them at the state level. With that, I will turn it over to Angie and Christy to close us out. All right. Thank you, Andrew. Um, so as Andrew said, we have a variety of resources um, provided to you to help support you, but um, today's webinar is really just the beginning of our series of support. Um, as was mentioned, we will be providing office hours to you, and so we have an exit slip that we would love for you guys to fill out. That exit slip will help us to know um, what you need to feel supported as you continue to implement your portrait of a graduate, and then also what we should address in those office hours that are coming up. By completing this exit slip, you will also receive um, a certificate for an hour towards CEUs um, that will be coming from me within the next week. So please be sure to complete that exit slip 
so that we can capture your email addresses and make sure that you get that credit for attending this webinar today. You can go on to the next slide. And as mentioned, these are the office hours um, and you will receive your links um, if you haven't already to sign up for those. Um, again, please complete that exit slip just so we can make sure that we are making the best use of your time in each of these office hours sessions. And then I'm gonna turn it over to Christy and she's going to speak a little bit about AIM. Thank you, Angie. So um, many of you know that the AIM conference is coming up in October. Uh, the AIM conference is the culminating event uh, where we, um, as an agency, bring all of the educators across the state of North Carolina together to really um, lean on each other, to convene, and to, to learn together. And the theme this year is all about the North Carolina portrait of a graduate. So um, it will be an amazing opportunity to come kind of um, wet your chops a little bit and um, dig into this work. Battelle for Kids will be offering their, their jigsaw puzzle um, activity in all of the different competencies across the uh, entire durable skill spectrum that, that we've identified. Um, in addition to that, you'll learn more about the why and you'll be able to see exemplars from other districts across the state of North Carolina. So please come if you haven't already done so. Um, we would love to have you all there to help contribute and, and to really add to this body of work. So um, you'll see here some of the things that you'll learn about, the intro to the portrait rubrics, um, scoring, critical thinking. And um, in addition to that, I know we've got a lot of leaders, um, district leaders on this uh, webinar today, and we will be doing a workshop um, especially for you to design a portrait of a leader while we are there. So um, that will be led by our um, special advisor for um, principal engagement, Tabari Wallace, and then also a leader with Battelle for Kids. Um, so just please, 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 if you haven't already, uh, join us in Raleigh for the AIM conference um, so that we can even go deeper into this work of a portrait of a graduate. So I think we might have three or four minutes where we could take a couple of questions, um, but do know that we have the we have the uh, office hours coming up, and that's really going to be our opportunity to be very interactive, to have lots of questions flying back and forth. We'll have our our technical experts from Battelle for Kids there as well, um, but I think we've got maybe two two or three minutes for questions. If there are any um, that you could just either come off mic or put in the chat. Any questions from anybody? Okay, so um, Kelsey Bailey's asking, Andrew mentioned that the performance tasks are internally linked and where? So the performance tasks, uh, Shannon, do you wanna address where those are found, please? Sure, the performance task, yeah, they're in the suggestions for use document, there is one link there. Um, again, Sarah walked through an elementary example today in the office hours, we have a secondary example that we'll go through. Um, and Aaron just put that link there. So it should be linked right within the suggestions for use document. You are most welcome, glad I could help. Any other follow-up questions? Okay, very good. So I think that this is a wrap. We're gonna give you two minutes back in your day. Uh, so glad you could join us today. Many, many thanks to all the educators across the state of North Carolina for your interest in the portrait of a graduate, for helping us to really expand the thinking around this and how we could potentially implement um, the durable skills in our classrooms. You're the best, this is an amazing state. Um, many thanks to our team at Battelle for Kids and, and of course, um, my colleagues, Dr. Angie Mullinex and Dr. Andrew Smith for co-presenting with me today. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful kickoff to the school year. And we'll see you again at the office hours. Thank you. Bye, everybody.